Okay, let's begin. Well, everybody, thank you for coming to the opening webinar. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is how to configure your RAID controller with the LSI and 3 wear controller. How to optimize for performance. These are the recommendations by LSI and 3 wear And how to expand your existing RAID array with the LSI and 3 wear uh, And how to increase your existing volume groups with an expanded RAID array. Today is the November 9th of 2010. My name is Todd Maxwell, and along with me is Tom Simon, who is part of the Open e sales team. The webinar information will be recorded, and you will be able to find all the demos and the recorded webinars at our webpage under the www.open-e.com slash library webcast and demos. There is a lot of presentations there, and I highly recommend everybody to visit them because they're filled with a lot of details and configuration and settings that uh, will help you streamline and save you from time for reading. The presentation is usually muted. Uh, this is due to because of the background noise during our conference calls. And questions are always welcome. If you find on the right side of your NetViewer window, there is a chat section. And this chat section will allow you to provide a question to me, and that way I can supply you an answer. So let's begin. The LSI Mega Raid settings for maximum hard drive performance. Now these are the settings that the LSI has recommended for types of the Raid 0, Raid 1, and Raid 10. And their typically settings are uh, basic are the stripe size is set for 256. And by the way, I'll be able to provide you this information as well. So after, if you are looking to have this information, um, I can either text it to you through the chat window, or if you want, email me, and I'll provide you this information as well. So the Stripe says they recommend a 256. Uh, the read policy uh, for these RAID 0, 1, and 10 is to have always read ahead enabled. Now, we'll show this in the GUI as well, so you can see where some of these settings are set. The write policy, write through, is recommended for streaming sequential performance. Mind you that it's always best to have a battery backup associated with your RAID controller. Uh, typically, I usually set them for right back uh, as they do recommend a battery backup if you do right back. So if not, please use the right policy. Now, the right back function is set for transactional or random tests. Usually we see a very on the fly performance increase with this setting. The I.O. policy uh, should be set to direct I.O and the disk cache policy should be enabled. Now for RAID 5 and 6, you want to keep the same stripe size, and the read policy, the same as, as above, which is always read ahead, and the write policy write back. The I.O. policy set as before, and the disk cache policy is enabled. And then of course, uh, the initialization state, uh, the full initialization, or write data across the entire volume. So we'll see these uh, settings momentarily. And now let's take a look at the three-wear settings for the maximum hard drive performance. Now in the three-wear, they, they didn't recommend for any of the RAID values other than uh, for all the RAID sets that are acceptable for the 96, 90s, 95, 50s, uh, and of course their newer versions. And they recommend a stripe size of 256 KB. The read cache should be set to intelligent for goods for streaming. So this is their default value that they have, and we'll show this as well. The read cache for, is set for, again, there's another uh, level, it's called basic, and this is good for random small block IOs. The write cache is set to on, and this is by default, and the disk cache is enabled by default as well. Uh, I usually set for mine the store safe to performance values, and uh, additionally, the auto verify, I usually set this to off. Usually that's for basically RAID health checks. Uh, this can take up resources, performance, so be aware of that as well. Uh, rapid recovery, I set it to today, disable as well. And the rebuild mode, low latency, and the verify mode as well to low latency. Uh, so these are the settings, and again, I'll supply those for you. As we uh, go on, and later on, if you email me, I can uh, send this documentation as well. 
So I want to end the PowerPoint and get right into the GUI. As that's usually where the action is. But uh, please check our webpage for the next date and times for the next webinars. Okay, so let's go ahead and start bringing up the DSS systems. And there is a question that just came up. So where can I view the record information later? Um, we have this on our website in the library section under webcast and videos. Okay, what I have, let's start off with the LSI gray controller here. I'm using the latest version, by the way. This is our new version that's going to be coming out. It'll be the 4900 series. Uh, presently, the latest version is a 4706 build version for the DSSV6. Uh, today, I'm bringing on something very special because in this next release, we now have the capabilities of being able to access the LSI RAID controller through the RAID web console management tools. And this will allow you to update firmware, being able to use your uh, Linux or Windows system to be able to access the LSI RAID controller, and also there are some updates to this version. Uh, it may come out to 49.10, 49.15 as we are still developing this. And this release will be out later on this month. So now the, we're going right into the LSI. Let's take a look at it. So first you want to go into Hardware RAID in the setup area. And here you'll see I have my uh, LSI RAID controller here. Now I've already set up a, a logical drive, but let's first take a look at what LSI is recommending. So if we look at the rebuild rate, I have basically um, have an existing RAID controller with an existing uh, logical uh, volume that's there, and I've created it. So when they talk about certain rebuild rates, this is where you can adjust it so you have a values, normally they default to 30%. But when you're doing a RAID migration to expand your RAID controller, you probably want to set these sets, uh, these values higher so as it's doing its RAID migration, you can speed up performance. And it also depends upon if there's a lot of activity on your server, you really don't want to dedicate that much resources because you'll have a performance hit. So you probably do want to go back to its default at 30%. But if you're running this over the weekend and you're adding existing drives to your RAID array to expand it, then you might want to increase it to 100% if there's less activity. Again, if you have the battery backup, you can enable certain features of the alarm state, the auto, build, uh, auto rebuild, and of course the backup warning. So as we look down here at the three, where I mean the LSI RAID controller, you can see all the physical disk configurations. Uh, if you click here on the left uh, the, by the physical disk, you can see information concerning the disk information. Uh, if there's media errors, uh, smart errors if you have the uh, smart controller enabled for the LSI. And if we scroll down, uh, we'll see that we can create a new logical um, from the disks, an array. And of course, with these, this LSI array controller, we're able to create all different types of RAID arrays and also global hot spares. So when you create your RAID array, you can now then set the type of disk that you wish to create your RAID, and then the value of your RAID set. Now here's where they're discussing about the stripe size. Um, we talk about we're adding new values. Currently, they're recommending you could do this at the controller. Our values are set to 128, but with the RAID array tool, which is the RAID uh, web RAID console tools. You can set that value up to 256. Now, the default write policy, this is where they basically talk for the write policy. If you're doing the RAID 0 or RAID 10 or a 1, you want to set that to write back. In the read policy, you want to set to always read ahead. Now, the cache policy, what they're recommending is to have this direct or in cache mode. Now typically you want to use the cache mode in some instances depending upon if you're in RAID 5 or 6. Now the access, usually we leave that on the default and disk cache policy. We want to set that to enabled. 
And, of course, they recommend the full, but in some cases I like to do a fast, uh, and their recommendation is to do a full initialization. So these are where you set your values. And then, of course, you create your uh, RAID set, and it builds it on the fly. Now, on the left here, I have already created a RAID value, and I have my uh, values set here. And you can also change these as well on the fly. Uh, when you hit the Apply button, these values are immediately changed. So here you can see that I have created a, a value set here, and um, I have a RAID 0 that's already established. So if I wanted to increase this RAID 0, it was called a RAID migration. So if I have an existing volume and I wanted to increase this, what I would do, it was a select a disk that's available. And of course, I'm already using a RAID 0. So it's associated with this RAID 0. It'll grab it from the pool and then start migrating the other disk. So you'll see three disks. And this will take some time. And for this RAID 0, and it will increase that size. So in a few minutes, uh, you'll see that there will be three disks. You know, you'll see a percentage sign. As you see, it's turning right now. And as it's processing this information, it's being able to take the disk, bring it on in, and then it will start calculating the percent of how long this will take. Once this takes, and again, this does take time, uh, once this is ready to go, what you'll see is that the in the unit manager, if we go to volume groups, you will see that the size will be increased, so it is available. Now, you'll be at this point, you can, and I wanted to demonstrate this, is that we can do a test to see the performance of your volume that you created in the uh, set that we have. So I'll provide you a small update and show you where that small update is, because it's going to be valuable. So before we go into the next step of increasing the existing RAID array that you have uh, and the volume, basically I want to take you over to 3Ware now. Oh, let's check, by the way, on the RAID array for the LD0. And here the migration is in process. We are at 0%. Uh, probably in about another 20 minutes we'll see up to 3 to 4%. And again, we can increase this. Uh, maximize the uh, process for the migration. If we go back into the LSI controller, let it wait for a second, and we could do the rebuild rate, and you could set it to 100% and change the value or less, depending upon how much activity is on your server. So let's take a look at the three-ware. Uh, this system is set up with a three-ware array controller. And here you have the three wear tools. So let's go ahead and click on the three wear. By the way, there's a question that just came up. It states, you may answer this later in the presentation, but we have several requests for online capacity without the need for restarting the SAN after the RAID volume expansion has been done. Is this possible? Yes, but with some RAID controllers, it is not. With the LSI, you're able to do this right on the fly because it's built into our GUI. Um, you'll be able to do this without the restart. In some instances, the three-wear, you will have to, but not all RAID controllers. Okay, so what he was referencing is, is if we go back over here, we've just increased the existing RAID set. It's migrating. And when it is complete, what he's saying is that in some cases, you may have to restart the system in order to see that existing, existing new uh, capacity to be added on to your existing volume or unit. So in this case, the LSI, which I have the 9280 series, it does not have to be rebooted.